to be Grace Slick for all those years. I mean, she got tired of being the acid queen, you know? Yeah. I mean, that's not what she was anymore, what she was about. I mean, she she was a, a mature, grown-up woman, you know? Identity. With a lot of talent. And, but, but yet her fans expected her to be, you know, a white rabbit and acid queen and do can do all of these outrageous things yeah. all the time to keep up with her own legend or personality or image or whatever and she couldn't handle doing that anymore you know so she just kind of got out of it for a few years and sorted out all of these personal problems and now Good for her. she wants to rock and roll again yeah and she's a healthy activity yeah and she yeah. figures if i'm i want to go on the road i want to rock and roll again i want to be in a band so if i want to do that again then well, why not do it with the starship so we said sure <laughs> I, and, and I think that her involvement will really make the band a lot more exciting live, you know, for the live gigs on stage oh, yeah, and concerts and stuff. Yeah, brings back that flash, yeah. you know. Now you've yeah. got uh, lots of pearls up there, you know. Yeah. It's like it should be a lot better now. The crown jewel of the rock and roll. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Oh, that was pretty uh -oh. neat. Is now what? Uh, over English there. You trapped. Hey, I snookered myself. I like this shop there. All right. Starting in Kansas. Yeah. Kansas City. <laughs> uh, look at this. Something go. No, something go. And the best part about that is they've got the best barbecued ribs in the world. Is that right? Arthur Bryant's. Yeah, Can Arthur you try Tony Romas here? Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, Tony Romas is the best, you know, commercialized chain. Right. That you can go in consistently I've ever had. Yeah. yeah. But but like this this place is like one of those real funky places that you go into and it's all hot and sweaty and it's, yeah, it's Boys funky. It's out. great. Which? Oh, God, how will we duplicate all this? <laughs> how long haven't we been together? It's probably since we got in here. Are you kidding? Tell me what happened. Start with the family again. No, this is impossible. No, we don't have to put make a business again. We have to. Well, we can talk about yeah. Simsy again. Hey, we got it. while he's got the music off, we got to get a yell from him. Can we, can we get that? He doesn't have a speaker. Oh no, never mind. <laughs> Can we get yeah. your yell? Put your yell on in here. Oh, he he can't hear what we're saying. Well, that's a good thing. Listen, how about this Bill is. Simzik guy? You know, Bill Simzik is a wonderful human being. <laughs> A, a prince, a gentleman, a scholar. A scholar and a gentleman. You know, yeah. a, a rare talent. Mm, but seriously, he is all of those things. And uh, no, I. It's been great. It, it's been great working with Bill. <laughs> <laughs> I always had to sit down with Patty Smith and do an interview three times. You know, yeah. in, in the rain, hovering in the Hollywood Sportatorium, which you've yeah, been there. It's, and like to get somebody to recreate a feeling, with you know, what they've just said. If it's next to, mm -hmm. you know, I would. It's 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 terrible the you know the repeatability in, in media that you have to endure. But but seriously, yeah. we did go back to uh, 1975. We worked together for the first time, fooled around and fell in love, and then um, Alan Blazik co-produced that with us. And since that time, Blazik and I have worked together on numerous projects. And now, um, since I had a chance to do another solo album, Bill you know expressed an interest in being involved in it, and. Um, he signed me and Joe Vitale to his production company, which is uh, distributed and affiliated with uh, Electra Asylum, which is a great label. Great. And uh, excellent choice. So he wanted to do uh, my solo album and Joe Vitale's solo album. So I was. Who took the picture of Joe in the bathroom at Bayshore? Uh, the picture. one in, in the bathroom here. Cast mask. It might not be oh. him. It's just signed by him. Yeah, I don't know who took that. 
Like, but these guys are into all kinds of funny pictures and cutouts. See, they make their own cutouts. You know, I don't know if you know what that is, but they'll they take like Paste photographs, yeah, and cut things out of magazines and make, make something humorous out of it, yeah. But um, you know, it's he's uh, Bill and I are both sports fanatics, so we have a no. Nah, go ahead. So we have a common bond there. You know, we're both into sports, and uh, he's got a fantastic sense of humor. When the mix is done, the TV and the sports come on. Sometimes even when it's not done, <laughs> you know, if if it's an if it's an important enough game, then work stops. You know, we have to watch the game, especially football. Although we got into the NBA playoffs pretty heavy, but uh, football is everyone's main Jones, I think. There. It is. It, yeah. It's pervasive. <laughs> When, um, you can't get enough of that. One on Doc Holly's album where they called him the Don Shula of rock and roll. That's right. That's <laughs> right. Well, you know, needless to say, he's a big Dolphin fan. So, and Shula is a, you know, yeah. big idol of his. Sure. You know. Maybe he even spent time in Baltimore where Shula really became a star. Baltimore. Yeah, Baltimore. that's where he started. Isn't it? But um, th when they were over in England, when he and Blazik were in England working on the Who album, they would try to, you know stay away from reading any of the results of the last Sunday's NFL games, you know, in the newspapers. And then by about Tuesday or Wednesday, they would get videotapes sent over to him of, you know, whatever the, the Sunday game was and Monday night football, and then he and Alan could get together on, like, Wednesday or Thursday in London and watch football games. <laughs> you know, that's how into it. How modern were. technology yeah. affects our, mm -hmm. our, our tastes. That's, that's right. <laughs> and then just to, to get them through until they could get their videotapes, of the actual games, they had one of these uh, Intel Mattel and television football games, you know, hooked up to the TV so they could play their own little games while they were waiting. So that's we're we're hooked. And you got a softball team, the Bayshore. Yeah, uh, uh, used to be the Bayshore Bums, and uh, now alias the Buckaroos. And the the team that we were playing called I, I want to steal their name because they were calling themselves the Conk Suckers, and I think that's a real good name. So I. Don't, I think we should steal that name for our I team. Think you should. Yeah. Probably get more yeah. mileage out of it. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry, I'm writing the cut the con sucker blues. I think there is a song called the cut. Let's find it out. Where were we? <laughs> con sucker uh yeah. con sucker uh, softball team. Yeah. And uh, we've been doing pretty well. Bill plays first base, you know. And um He's got a fractured finger, you, you may have noticed. Which I shook, Yeah. gently. And they say that softball is a non-violent, non-contact sport. Not know. true. No, I might have to. Ooh, was it the Oakland A's pitcher that yeah, got a line Yeah, got his cheek the shattered the other night. Yeah. Now, I'm, I'm an Oakland A's fan now, too, of course, living in the Bay Area and yeah, sure. being a Billy Martin fan and all that. So I've been following that. I, I think I'm going to do, a, when I get home in about a week and a half, I'm going to sing the national anthem for the A's game against Baltimore. Is this something that you think will come, will, this is going to work? Are you going to do this? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's already been planned. Yeah, I've wanted to do it for a long time, you know, sing the national anthem at a sporting yeah, event, a sporting being a big event. sports fan. Another thing I wanted to do for a long time was do, I, Make I drink. Make sure you've got videotapes of that. Oh, yeah. Too, you got know, to. Definitely. I drink Budweiser exclusively, you see. I'm a big Budweiser fan. So for years, I wanted to do a Budweiser commercial, you know, because I like their little jingle, oh, yeah. you know, the melody and stuff. So I finally got to do that. And uh, it's been played and a lot on the radio down here, yeah. I've heard it about three or four times the last couple of days, and I love it. <laughs> it's great. So I think it's one of the best vocals I ever did. Yeah. 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 Are, you, are you now receiving cartons or cases in the mail? For <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Free buds? No. But I drink enough of it anyway. Mm -hmm. Starting to show a little, you know. Hardly, hardly. Well, sing a few bars of your buds, Bud. Let's just see what this... Uh, this buds for you. You know that one? Yeah. Uh, there's no one else who does it quite the way you do. You know, that one. And we did it kind of <laughs> rock and roll. And we did it, Blazik did that with me too. We did it in about, well, in one day. We started at one in the afternoon and we walked out of the studio at five the next morning, straight through. Because we had to do four different versions of it. You know, a 60 second spot, 30 second spot, right. and then uh, 60 second instrumental and 30 second instrumental records you know recorded overdubs vocals mixed all in one day it's maddening for what yeah. you go through for 60 yeah. seconds or yeah. 30 seconds um 
Uh, some of the guys, a few guys from the old Elvin Bishop band played on it with me because they're all still real good friends of mine and we keep in touch. You know, and, uh, Johnny V played guitar and uh, Don Baldwin played drums on it and Bill Slace played uh, horns and keyboards. They're, those guys were all from the Elvin Bishop band and, uh, and then a guy named uh, Brett Bloomfield played bass and another guitar player named Greg Douglas. Just, what just came to mind, Mickey, is that you've got such a clear voice, you know, that you project in, in your performances and recording, and I, you know, I noticed you smoked cigarettes and yeah. the road and, you know, just life itself. How do you, especially working when you've got to finish a recording in, say, 24 hours or, or, or yeah. commercial, how do you protect your voice, the quality of it, keep it so mm. you can use it to your best advantage? I guess I've been pretty lucky because um, it's hard, you know, it's, uh, and there is a certain amount of luck involved. You you hope mm. that whenever your key performances will be, you know, whenever they are, will fall on like a good day where you're having a good day do you, do you <laughs> and the voice is in those? good shape. You, you well, you try to. You try, try to, to like to abuse yourself. Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. And I and I, I try to like if I know I've got an important date coming up or something for three or four days in yeah. advance, I try to you know prepare myself mentally for it and visualize that when the performance actually occurs, that that my voice will be good. And I visualize the notes and hitting them properly and all that stuff. If you can and see uh, it, you can. Yeah. Move it. So and uh, so uh, and I try to you know take care of myself and get enough sleep. To me, is the most important thing. Mm -hmm. uh, lack of, lack of sleep makes me lose my voice quicker than anything. Plus, you use your voice naturally, so it's not yeah. like you're applying any undue yeah. pressure to it, so it mm -hmm. shouldn't malfunction. Yeah. At the stage of your the life. Probably the most serious thing I do is smoke cigarettes. You know, I don't do too many drugs or anything. And I'm not just saying that for the camera. It's, it's <laughs> He's true. strictly a bud man, a yeah. Budweiser. This bud's yeah. for Mickey. And I, I figured that, you know, I used to smoke marijuana and cigarettes. So I figured, you know, I've got to, that's going to be real rough on the throat, so I've got to give up something. Where is so, that split? So, <laughs> so I gave up joints and stayed on the Winstons or whatever. <laughs> you know, and, uh, Well, that's a... Common comment on the times. Yeah. yeah. If you want to have anything you want to say from the world in general, I think you've got enough. Here. A final yeah. word. If you want to get topic. back on the family, talk about his father yeah. and his friends. Boy, we had some good stuff here on dad and everything. That, you know, <laughs> yeah. He might he not be able it. to recreate. Yeah. Might be gone for all time. But God, I have it in my head now, Mickey, and I'll sort of <laughs> sort yeah. Pass that's it on. That's <laughs> true. That's true. That's you know. But uh, not to the world in general. Mm, God, I don't know. That's kind of tough. Mickey Thomas, this part of your life. Now we're where we stopped. <laughs> now, I don't know. Uh, How you know, about one word I, that summarizes rock and roll to you? <laughs> one word that summarizes rock and roll. Hmm. That is a real tough one. I guess uh, esoteric. <laughs> uh, existential. <laughs> now, I don't know. Rock and roll should, should be fun, I think, you know. I think there's there's not enough of that kind of attitude in it today. That people, a lot of uh, artists and and listeners and everybody take it tend to take it a little too seriously sometimes, you know. Yeah. So I think rock and roll has lost some of its fun. Spontaneity, and, yeah, should, it shouldn't take it seriously. And, yeah, and um, you know, it's 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 not like uh, you know I I know a lot of people who go in the studio and try to make records and stuff, and you think they were making you know like. Uh, American epic novel or something, you know, and that's not what rock and roll is all about, I don't think. Yeah. Uh, I, I think there has to be some degree of seriousness, but always tongue in cheek, <laughs> you know, with a little bit of humor. That's what makes it fringe. work. Yeah, that's what makes it work. It has to be. So I would say that rock and roll should be humorous, tongue in cheek humor. And, and as the final the joke that you've heard recently. And as for the world, the world is over. Have fun, <laughs> you know. <laughs> uh, apocalypse now apocalypse <laughs> wait uh, right, I've got an album coming out new jokes now we should ask Bill about that he's uh, he's the uh, joke man but uh, there's some bad ones floating around I don't you know I sometimes just jokes are getting tacky these yeah, days they I, are I've noticed there's been a, that. a rash of assassination jokes that I won't even oh god I know I hate those especially yeah. the John Lennon assassination jokes yeah. that's I, I'm not ready not for that <laughs> not nope. funny not funny. Not Even funny. if they're funny, they're not funny. <laughs> you know, to me. But, uh. <laughs> right. The day he was shot, he made the chart. 70 with a bullet. 70 with a bullet, that's right. The music industry. Yeah, I won't, I won't even pick on Reagan as far as the assassination jokes go. Now, Bill should know that one. 
that's what that's going. Yeah, he probably does. Mm -hmm. Bill likes Polish jokes, you know, being of the Polish. Pol yeah. Yeah. He must have loved it when the Pope was.